Well, rather than using the ribbon bar, I'm going to use something called direct manipulation. Now, this is again putting your focus at the cursor rather than trying to interact with the application. We're going to interact mostly with the cursor here. So if I simply select on a sketch object, you'll notice these little glyphs come up. And these direct manipulation glyphs allow me to do a number of different things. We're going to create an extrusion, we're going to create a revolution, or maybe we'll go back in and edit that particular sketch. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to create an extrusion. And the first thing it's going to ask me is, well, you, have, you have multiple closed profiles. So you'll note that I've closed off both the uh, initial rectangle and the additional uh, geometry that I added to it, the arm of this steering mechanism for a remote control car. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to select both of those profiles. So I'll click both of the profiles and now it's prompting me for the length. What, uh, what length do you want this extrusion to be? Now again, I can interact right at the cursor if I so choose. I can grab a hold of that, uh, that arrow, drag it back and forth in either direction. But I can also interact with uh, and, and, and provide it different pieces of information. So for example, I can go in one direction, the opposite direction. I can go in two directions through a symmetric extrude. And as I drag across, you can see that update. Or I can go with an asymmetric ex extrusion. What that means is I can go in a opposite direction with a different taper angle uh, than I would maybe in a positive direction. Now this particular uh, extrusion is going to be a symmetric extrusion at three millimeters. And I'll go ahead and hit the little check box here to say, okay, I've completed that command. So congratulations, you've created your first sketch and your first 3D object. Let's go ahead and continue on creating the rest of this part. Now when Inventor starts a part, it automatically creates a sketch and it creates a sketch on the XY plane. How do I know that? I've been using Inventor since Inventor 1. How would you have known that? I just told you. So <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to repurpose um, some of those planes for other features that we're going to add to this part. So rather than starting a new work plane or even sketching on any one of these surfaces, I'm going to begin another sketch on the same work plane that originated this part. That's why I did a symmetric extrude, so I could take advantage um, of the, uh, uh, the symmetric nature of this part um, and, uh, and, and not have to create a bunch of unnecessary work planes. So I'll go ahead and select the XY plane. I'll go over here into my graphics area and choose Create Sketch. Now I'm sketching through the middle of this part. There's a nice feature inside of Inventor that allows me to remove material uh, temporarily so that I can see exactly where I'm sketching. And there's two ways to access it. If you right click your mouse, right click, right? I've said that a couple times already. And choose Slice Graphics, you'll see that it'll remove material and display the sketch plane for you um, so that you can really see where you're working on. Now there's another way to do it and that's uh, the F7 key. The F7 key toggles on and off um, that, uh, that status. Now I'm looking at the, the part from an isometric view and, and, and many people prefer not to sketch in an isometric view, especially if you're new to 3D. So there's a couple of ways uh, that I navigate inside of Inventor. Now the ones that you'll, you'll probably take advantage of if you don't have a 3D mouse, and, and this, is the, uh, this is the 3D mouse that I use, it's a Space Pilot from 3D Connection. Um, that allows me to actually manipulate the, uh, uh, the orientation of the model in my graphics area without calling up commands. They kind of run transparently, which is really nice and it's a big time saver. So if you're fortunate enough to have one of those uh, or to purchase one of those, um, they're a really, really big time saver and I highly recommend them. Now, for those of you um, like me who didn't have one uh, prior to earlier this year, you're going to have to use um, the, the tools that are built into Inventor to navigate uh, inside of Inventor. So again, we've already learned the wheel rolling back and forth, changes your zoom, holding the wheel down, pans. Well, how do you orbit? How do you twist this thing around if you want to uh, look at it from a different angle? There's a couple ways to do that. Over here in the upper right hand corner of your screen, you're, you're going to see the view cube. Now this view cube allows you to transition to specific front, isometric, 
right side views. You'll notice that I have the ability to rotate at 90 degree increments by hitting the, uh, the arrows. I can go to a bottom or if I simply hold the wheel down while I'm in the middle of that view cube and just kind of move my cursor around, you see that I have the ability to rotate. Now that's one thing that, that, that people like. Um, another one is actually clicking the rotate command. So if, if you click the rotate command, this is the free orbit. Okay? And by placing my cursor inside of that compass, I have the ability to orbit around freely, uninhibited, and free as a bird. Now, if you move your cursor outside of the compass, you have different controls. So this will allow me to go around in a circle if I move my cursor outside the compass. If I go to the north tick, if you will, I'll only be rolling up and down. If I go to the east or west uh, tick of that compass, I'm only going left and right. So again, you can kind of see the glyph on your cursor change as you move the cursor relative to your, uh, to your, to your compass there. Now, the thing about this orbit, then the way that I called it up by clicking the orbit command, I have to right click and choose done to exit the command. Just a couple clicks that I'm not um, awful uh, enthused about when I'm in the middle of a number of different commands. So what you can do instead is utilize the hotkey. Now that hotkey is F4. Now F4 essentially works like a toggle and I don't have to complete the command in order for me to be able to go on to another command. And as a matter of fact, I can use F4 while I'm in the context of another command. So I highly recommend getting used to utilizing F4 um, to do your rotate or even utilize the view cube. Because it's pretty handy. If I want to go to just a top view, I'll just click on the front view here, and now I can go ahead and continue sketching out.